At the age of 12, Shu Bam Banerjee learned how random the universe can be. One seemingly inconsequential thing occurs, in this case the ring of the doorbell, and life changes in a big way. I looked out, no one was there, but I did see this flyer over there, and which asked for donations for the visually impaired. Um, I asked, I don't know why, I just asked a random question to my parents, how do blind people read? They didn't really have time for me, so they said, uh, sorry, I'm busy, can you go Google it? And one thing led to another. Shubham, whose previous ambition had been to quarterback his football team, learned that a diminishing number of the blind read Braille. In part, voice recognition technology has taken away the need. But the now 13-year-old became convinced that the cost of a Braille printer, which expands the reading universe for the blind, is prohibitive. I found out it was $2,000 onwards. Many people don't really uh, have the priv are not that privileged to own one, and that's when I decided to try and hack together a braille printer and a Lego Mindstorms EV3 kit. Yes, you heard correctly. He ordered a robotic Lego kit. After seven attempts and many, many late nights, voila, he had an inexpensive portable braille printer. I had to make it myself, program it myself, and um, I just uh, seemed to make <laughs> uh, Braille printer. So there are actually three motors. This motor over here, it rotates the paper uh, over here so you would get the input, or output, sorry. Uh, this motor moves the head uh, left and right. Um, this motor over here moves the head up and down. Shubham's one person focus group is Henry Wettler, blind since birth and a doctoral student in chemistry at the University of California, Davis. Wedler learned about the Lego printer from a local newspaper story and then got in touch. I explained to him that what we really need is some way for blind people to be able to produce Braille, uh, not necessarily quickly, but sort of on the go, just like sighted people can produce print on a printer. That sort of printer, that sort of technology has never existed for me or, or any other blind person that reads Braille. So Shubham kept going. The Lego version needed a sighted person to operate it. Is there much paper left on this particular one? Uh, right. And it just wasn't practical for mass production. He cannibalized a standard printer and converted it, all with a little help from some new and moneyed friends. What began as an at-home project, then a science fair exhibit, then a winning entry at a technology symposium, eventually led to attention and dollars from a major player in Silicon Valley. Intel Capital, the venture capital arm of Intel, where Shubham's father works, decided to back the project, but did so only after putting the boy through the ringer to make sure no one would question whether this was about nepotism or innovation. I uh, started calling my friends, do I got funding from Intel? Um, I, I was telling my mom, I was screaming, I was just really happy. In addition to funds, Intel asked Shubham to experiment with its new microprocessor called the Edison to determine how it could make the printer far more functional for the blind. What's inside here is the processor, uh, the memory, the storage, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so that it can communicate with things around it. And we, we made that you know, super, super simple for people to be able to integrate on top of. And that's what the eighth grader did. And is this for a, a visually impaired person to use? Yeah. This one is. This one, actually, I'm not fully done with it, but sooner or later, we will, or I'll actually um, add voice to text where you can say, at their phone, perhaps, uh, print out A. So you and I wake up in the morning and we look at our phones or we look at the newspaper to find out what's going on with the headlines. Well, somebody without sight can't do that. And so what he had uh, Intel Edison do is Intel Edison now goes out and grabs from the cloud the headlines from CNN or BBC or, or, or NewsHour uh, and, uh, and has those automatically print. You know, we all can listen to a book or we can listen to our computer talk to us, which is what I do with my computer every day. I don't have a way to print Braille easily. There is something so special that comes with taking a page, opening a book, and reading that page your, yourself. I think you can say that as a print reader as well. Is that true? Absolutely. News of Intel's investment went viral, and the middle schooler is now something of a celebrity in the tech world. 
and even got invited to a White House tech event. Shubon's parents created a company called Brago, a combination of Braille and Lego, to push the invention forward. His mom is CEO, dad is on the board, and Wedler is a consultant. It's a lot for an adolescent to handle. The money, the fame, the pressure to succeed. You had said it's hard for him to be a 13-year-old. Yes. In what ways? First of all, um, he does double work. He has to maintain his grades, but at the same time, he has also other obligations. Uh, especially working with, say, investors, working with uh, technology, uh, uh, you know, people. Yeah. Do you worry about that? Yes. As a mom, yes, mm -hmm. I do. I, I worry a lot because, you know, now people recognize him, uh, you know, when he goes places and he's just my baby. Do you see moments where you think the pressure, the pressure got to him today? Yes, I do, but then, you know, he, it's opposite. He tells me, oh, it's okay, I can do it. No one is saying how much Intel Capital put into the project, but enough to hire engineers to keep testing and refining the printer, which Shubham hopes will sell for less than $500. What's next? Next is uh, still bringing my company forward. I do have a couple ideas um, that are um, starting in my head. I have... Like? Uh, secrets. <laughs> They're all the secrets. But we'll be hearing from you again. Yeah. Most startups fail, but as Shubham Banerjee has found, life is random, and he may just be the one to score. This is Jackie Judd in Santa Clara, California, for the News Hour. Random indeed. We have more on team inventors, including one high schooler who created a flashlight powered by heat generated from your hand.